State and national health officials say that many kids of all ages are struggling right now with anxiety, stress, and depression since the start of the new school year. Joining us, we're glad to have back with us Dr. Lewis Seidner with M Health Fairview. So thank you for being with us. Thank you. What are some of the issues? What is going on? I mean, as, as I mentioned before we started, I've been hearing that lots of students are having a hard time right now. Well, certainly there's a lot of stress. Uh, I think there's always been a lot of stress for students. Adolescence is a time of stress, lots of changes, lots of developmental uh, elements. And then you add to that the fact that we've been in a pandemic for a couple of years. School has been off and on at times. People have been more isolated than they typically are. Uh, even families at times don't get together because of the pandemic. And so people have felt more isolated and that's one of the triggers for symptoms of, of mental health. And as you said, it, um, it's not unusual. New school year, students have a lot of stress and anxiety, but even right. more so now. And is it because the, the COVID is still with us and we're still seeing that health well, issues? Certainly COVID is an issue. And I think the uncertainty of our health, the uncertainty of where it's safe to go with a mask, without a mask, all of the questions that have, have come up with that. Is there a new variant? Will I catch the variant? What's the consequence? Uh, but I think there's also a lot of other things going on in our world, and all of those together uh, add to a stressful situation in combination with a time of life that's particularly stressful. For and it's right kids. on their, their mobile, their iPhones, and it's right sure. there with them all the time. Yeah, it's hard to separate from what's going on in our communities, our world, uh, and everything in between. What type of um, symptoms and things are they exhibiting someone who might be experiencing the stress, anxiety, or depression? Sure. I know it's different for different things, but. It is, and I think what's important to understand is that we all have some of those symptoms. Um, we all have times when we're anxious. We all have times when we're sad, other times when we're less sad and less anxious. So we're all on a continuum. And when we talk about it as being problematic, it's when it impacts someone's ability to do the things they enjoy and to do their normal activities, going to school in the case of a student, uh, having after school activities, having friendships, having interaction with family. Those are normal things to do. And when those symptoms get so significant that it impacts their abilities to do those things, that's when we talk about it as needing some form of intervention. How do you know at what point then they need either from a school counselor to more professional medical help and stuff like that. Right. Well, we are very appreciative of the school and the school counselors and the observations of school professionals. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest elements that was missing through COVID are the observations of objective parties in, in the school, people who know kids and appreciate the changes in them. Uh, so that has been a significant challenge while schools were closed or while schools had staffing challenges um, to, to do that. I think part of it is know your child uh, and know when the symptoms are no longer just a bad day, uh, just a tough you know, interaction with friends, but really are causing more significant problems and more protracted problems uh, when they're struggling. Um, we've seen students who were relatively good students, not perfect, but, but good students suddenly having much more troubles with their classes or folks who enjoyed uh, playing sports or playing an instrument or being part of other activities no longer having any interest. When those things start to show a pattern, not just a day I don't want to go, but a pattern over time of just lose, losing interest, uh, being more uh, anxious and more isolative, those are times really to start to seek some help. And we're talking about kids of all ages, all backgrounds, the whole. Right. It, it's equal opportunity. Equal opportunity. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. yeah. It's all children. Um, you know, every child, every person is on a continuum. Some children struggle more, some struggle less. Uh, but particularly through the last two and a half years or so, I think we've all struggled a little more than we did prior. And so children who maybe had more potential for struggling may be really struggling now, uh, but even children who may not have been struggling are now struggling a bit. And what type of help is available? What does M Health Fairview offer? 
You know, I think there's all kinds of, of, of uh, available services. The one that I would usually advocate starting with are school resources. You know, school resources are available uh, and, and, you know, should be checked into uh, whenever feasible. Uh, additionally, there are many kinds of therapists in our community. Uh, M Health Fairview has a service that if you have a particular area that you're looking for, a particular type of service, we can help connect you with those, um, those services. You know, for some, it gets more significant. Um, one of the things that we always worry about are kids who feel hopeless, and sometimes as a result of that hopelessness, feel like life is not worth living uh, and potentially want to take their life or, or, or take risks that, that risk their life. And so we want to intervene quickly in those cases. And um, there's a new hotline number, I think, for suicide prevention, is. 988, mm -hmm. that is available 24-7 everywhere. It is. A and I think it's important that we take those kinds of thoughts seriously. Um, you know, it's not something you can just push through it oftentimes. And so um, I, I, I always stress, know your child, pay attention to what's going on with your child. And, and this is true for adults too. So I, I know this is particularly about children, um, but I think mm -hmm. know your own uh, emotions and, and know where those edges are. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you back on the show with great information for our viewers. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, a young White Bear Lake man shares his personal story and his need for a new kidney. His story is next.